Hello everyone, this is Caleb Simpson here from ZeldaDungeon.net, and you are watching our video walkthrough of The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. This is the 17th chapter of the walkthrough, which covers the 6th dungeon of the game, The Temple of Time. This chapter runs just a little under 50 minutes, and is going to be broken up into 6 videos. As soon as you enter, you want to run over to the opposite side of the room, and as you approach the very fancy looking door, Minda will then pop up and mention that all the statues up until now have been symmetrical. There's been like two of them on either side, and they both matched. But here, there's only only one statue while the other spot looks rather lonely. It's all empty and that hasn't been the case thus far, so she thinks that's really suspicious. So she suggests that you transform into a wolf and use your senses to see what you can find out. Not a bad idea, so head over and do so. And if you look in this empty spot, you'll see that you can see like a sensey hologram, I guess. So Minda will say, aha, I knew it. So she suggests that you go searching for the very obviously missing statue. I'm going to go ahead and turn around, you'll see that there's a floor switch that is on top of this little platform. I'm going to go ahead and step on it, and this will raise a nearby chunk of flooring that leads up to the next area. However, as soon as you step off the switch, it'll sink back down into the floor. This is a classic Zelda puzzle in which you have to place another weight on top of the switch so that we can gain access to the next area. So pick up one of the jars, set it on the switch, which allows you to climb up onto the southern portion of the room. Near the far southern stairs, you'll encounter a familiar character that we've seen in other dungeons as well. This ecstatic, chicken-like character named Uku is excited because she believes she's finally found what she's looking for. She claims that the treasure buried deep within this temple is technology that was created by her, her own people and will aid her in getting back home. So she asks us to let her tag along since we're venturing through the temple anyway, and we can aid her in the search. She'll help out by temporarily acting as an item, giving us the ability to teleport out of the dungeon and return here anytime we want. Seems kind of backwards to me, like she wants to go further in the dungeon, so as a result she'll help us by teleporting away. I don't know, it doesn't make, really make sense. <laughs> with that out of the way, instead of heading to the south, you want to continue following this upper ledge which leads down to a little area with two torches. This is a rather typical puzzle in Twilight Princess, and we've seen it several times. You want to light both the torches to make a large chest appear containing a small key. Once you have acquired that, you want to go back up the stairs and enter the locked door to the south. In this next passageway, you'll encounter a new enemy called a Goma. They greatly resemble spiders, but they only have four legs rather than eight. Anyway, they're pretty aggressive and will rush towards you if they see you, but a few sword slashes will easily take care of them. I'm going to grab one of the jars in the room and place it on the floor switch, which is in the center. This will essentially flip, which gates are currently open and closed, allowing us to access the nearby stairs. Now I'm going to take this opportunity to show that you can also claw shot the Gomas. Doesn't that just feel good? You want to return to the other alcove to find a small chest that contains arrows. Now that we're able to access these stairs, but now that the gate up ahead is closed, so how do we open it? By taking the jar off the switch, we'll be stuck on this side, so here's a hint. We just got arrows. In this case, I'm going to use the claw shot instead. I'm going to smack the jar and break it, thus getting the jar off the switch and switching the gates that are currently open. This will allow us to progress further in the dungeon. I'm going to run up the stairs and immediately you encounter a little it's a little awkward because of the slope we're on, but it shouldn't cause you too much problems. At the top of the stairs, you'll see three more of them, which can be a little more complex. When they surround you, regular sword slashes or moves like the spin attacks are probably the best. You can also try using the back slice, just be warned if they have an axe-like blade on their tail, which they can strike you with as well. Once you've defeated them, you want to look off to the side to find yet another new enemy. Once you get close enough, it will wake up, and this is an Armos, which is a returning foe from many other games in the Zelda series. It has a more tribal look this time around, and it wields a hammer that will try and smack you with if you get too close. They move around rather slowly, and their weak point is the crystal on their back. Side jumps are very effective to get behind them, where you can smack them with your sword, but also the back slice also does wonders, but that leaves you kind of vulnerable. Alternatively, you can use ranged weapons such as the bomb arrows or the ball and chain. That's a little more awkward to position yourself perfectly, and you have to be far enough away if you are using bomb arrows so you don't, you know, explode. <laughs> My vote goes to the ball and chain for being the best item to defeat them with. Once you've defeated it, a large chest will appear where it was resting, containing the dungeon map. There are a few rooms that are practically hidden throughout this dungeon, and one of which you are required to go to. So this map will be very helpful to find those hidden rooms you haven't been to yet. Next, you'll see that there are some keys along the windows here, and rather than getting too close and having them come after us, you can simply smack them from afar using the hero's bow or the claw shot. This will kill them instantaneously, 
thus avoiding the confrontation. You can also use Z while running around to strafe and around and get closer. Once they're defeated, you want to climb up on one of the ledges and open the small chest to get a red rupee, which is worth 20. You want to pick up the odd little horn statue here and take it over to the nearby gate that has a switch on either side. You can use these statues to hold them down, or you can use the nearby jars on the other platform. Either way, it doesn't really matter, they'll both work. Once you have both these switches pressed down, this will open up the gate. You want to run on through here, killing the keys, then going around the corner and entering the next door. In this large open room, you'll immediately see an electric barrier up ahead that is blocking off the central part of the room. We can't do anything with that just yet, so instead, turn off to the one side where you'll find a variation of the BMO statues we've seen earlier on in the game. As usual, you want to shoot their orb-like eye with an arrow to defeat them. You want to continue on through this room, which is simply filled with the Zalthos, and it should be pretty easy for you to defeat, and also a good chance for you to play around with some of your hidden skills. Now, in one side of the room, you'll see that there is a postal that is behind a gate, but we will not be able to access that until almost the end of the dungeon, because we will need the dungeon item. So I will be returning there later to get that postal, so do not worry about that if you, you know, like I say, don't sit here trying to figure out how to get in there, we can't do anything about it yet. You want to try having a little fun with this, you know, killing all of those alphas as you go, just out some of your various items and sword techniques. When you're all done playing around, you can press A to make Link flourish his sword as he sheathes it. So cool. You want to run onward going up the stairs, and you'll find that there's um, you know, a broken chunk of stairs, but there's some rails that are up along the wall, built in there kind of conveniently. But it almost seems like a fix, as in, you know, somebody saw the broken chunk there, so they decided to put that there so that they could get across. It's almost as if, you know, it was done there on purpose, you know, and as there are some later examples in this dungeon as well, it's almost like it hints at the people who made this place intending you to use the spinner. You want to continue on into the circular area where there are two of these spinning blade traps that start making laps around the area. One goes each direction, so pick one and follow it. To the west side, you'll find one of those little horn statues. You want to pick it up and continue on to the south, where you'll find two floor switches. You want to place the statue on one of them, then return to the center of this area, you know, just avoiding the blade traps as you go. Once you make it to the middle, you want to go ahead and push or pull the central gear thing to turn the platform, causing it to rise or lower. This is very similar to that really long cylinder shaped room in the Arbiter's Grounds where you would raise and lower the platform, but this one you can't actually see like the spinning, you know, part of the platform down below, so it's it's like really confusing to know which way to turn it. <laughs> in the Wii version, it's clock counterclockwise to lift it and clockwise to lower it, and I always get them backwards and end up <laughs> going the wrong direction, it's so annoying. This will take you down to the ground level and inside this sealed area with all these goma larvae. And these nasty little critters will always appear in large groups and they will chase after you when you're not looking, but they'll run away when you face towards them. So they kind of remind me of the ghosts from the Super Mario series called Boos because of that. <laughs> Anyways, we'll deal more with them later, but right now we're interested in the statue that is down here. You want to pick it up, place it on the platform, and raise the platform by turning the gear counterclockwise. As usual, if you're playing the GameCube version, that'll be reversed. And once you're back up at the top, you want to pick up the little horned statue again and work your way over to the south end of the room. Once you get there, you want to stand on the platform that's very obviously going to rise, turn around, and place the statue on top of the opposing switch. This will raise the platform, thus gaining us access to the south door. As soon as you enter, the door will lock behind you, leaving you locked in here with two Armos. These ones are far apart, and we have plenty of room, so they're not too difficult. As long as we're in here, I'll show you a few more methods to defeating them. They take a moment to wake up when, as soon as you go up close to them, so why not use this to your advantage? You can sneak around behind them and smack them before they even have a chance to retaliate. Take that! As always, you want to stand back while they jump around like crazy. Alternatively, you can use bombs to blow up their sensitive crystal. You want to throw one right behind them, and it'll kill them instantaneously. Another great weapon to use, and is my personal favorite, is the ball and chain, which stuns them when you smack them in the front, but it'll also kill them in one hit if you smack their crystal behind. So you want to you start using the ball and chain, you smack them, and then you quickly put away the ball and chain, you roll behind them, and then you turn around, z-target them, and use the ball and chain again to kill them. So once they're both defeated, a large chest will appear in one of the alcoves to the side, but open it to get a small key, which we can use on the locked door in the previous room. Now before leaving, there is one more thing we can do real quick. You want to run to the far south end of the room, and you want to open the small chest to get a red rupee, which is worth 20. That's all we needed to do here, so now that the door is open, since we've killed all the enemies in this room, you want to return to the previous room. You want to circle around to the opposite side once you get there, and be careful not to get nailed by the spikes. No pun intended. You want to go through the locked door to the north, and that's all the time I have for this video. So join me for the next one, and we'll continue our way through the Temple of Time. <laughs>